Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through praying a prayer and receiving Jesus into your heart. No. For by grace you have been saved through faith. What is faith? It's just the, the, the noun tense of the verb belief. Same for belief and faith is just a verb and a noun, but means the same thing. Faith, for by grace you have been, past tense, saved through faith. It's not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Past tense, you have been saved through faith. Plus nothing, minus nothing, faith alone in Christ alone, by grace alone. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Uh, now turn to 1 Corinthians. Chapter 1. verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that are perishing foolishness, but unto us which are being saved, it is the power of God. Question, who is us referring to? Well, who's the writer? Now, was he already a Christian? Now, who's the, who's the recipients of the letter? Christians. Us, Christians, those who have already been saved, are being saved. Present tense. For us who are being saved, it is the power of God. What does that mean? Well, those that are perishing, and I personally believe that those that are perishing is referring to believers also. Those who are falling away, not growing in Christ, but perishing. Because if you're already lost, you're not perishing, you're dead. But those that are perishing, those that are falling, and when I say falling away, I don't want you to think lose your salvation because I believe in eternal security and we'll cover that in this study. But those that are falling away, the preaching of the cross is just becoming foolishness. But those that are being saved, those that are growing in Christ, what is the power of God? Those of us that are being saved. Now, question. Being saved, uh, you, you, you hear the term sanctification, past tense justification, present tense sanctification, future tense glorification. How are we being saved? What's the requirement? How, how are we, I asked you earlier, how, what must I do to be saved? Past tense, when we saw, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Present tense, what must I do to grow in Christ to be being saved? Well, we have to believe, we have to have faith, but can we sit on a pew and just say, I believe that, amen, and expect to grow in Christ? It's through works. No, we have to act upon our works. We have to start submitting our lives to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. We have to start repenting of our <laughs> sins, turning from our sins, and growing in Christ. We have to do something. Now, is that a work salvation? In one sense, yes, it is. Past tense, completely apart from works. Faith alone in Christ alone. Present tense, in order to be sanctified, in order to grow in Christ, we have to add works to our faith. And if you want to know the truth of the matter, the book of James is a very uh, confusing and, and, and it's misled a lot of Christians in their understanding of salvation. The book of James is dealing with sanctification, not justification. You hear a lot of, uh, of, of messages about, well, if you don't continue in works, then you're really not, it doesn't prove that you're really saying, you know, they, they it's confusing. But when it comes to salvation present tense, you have to add works. 
You can't just say, I believe that and expect to grow in Christ. So, present state plus works. Now, turn to the book of Hebrews, chapter 1. <clears throat> verse, the last verse, uh, he's speaking about angels, and the writer says, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who are about to inherit salvation? Is that past, present, or future? Future. Future. Now, who do you think will inherit salvation? Okay. What do we think of when we think of an inheritance? Something given to you, and, and I know we can leave our things with pretty much anybody in this day and time, but as a general rule, who do we leave, who do we give the inheritance to? Children. Children. Those who are already part of the family. We don't leave the inheritance to people that aren't in the family. Only family members can inherit. Angels are ministering spirits sent to minister to those who are about to inherit salvation future tense. This isn't, this, this isn't past tense. So this isn't deliverance from hell. This isn't uh, an entrance into heaven. This is a future salvation that we haven't received yet. This is a family. This is something for the family. Uh, in the theological world, it's termed glorification. Now, how do you suppose we receive glorification? I'm sorry? When we get to heaven. When we get to heaven, when we, when we leave this world and go on, it's not something we receive. Now, let me ask you another question. Do you believe, do you think that everyone's glorification, salvation, do you believe everyone's inheritance will be equal? No. I do. And we've got, we've got mixed answers. <laughs> yes or no? Why would you think it would be? I mean, I know what What is what is glorification? What just the term glorification? What does that mean? Saved ultimately from sin's presence. Right, but what is what does it mean to be glorified? You kind of put on a pedestal. Put on a pedestal. Do you think every Christian is going to be elevated to the same degree? No. What do you think is going to make the difference? Works. The works that you do on earth. The degree to which we are sanctified will be the degree to which we will be glorified. We read the parables of the talents, the parable about the pound. Remember the, the one that brought forth one talent or one pound, received rulership over one city. The one that brought forth two pounds got two cities. The one that got ten pounds got ten. It's going to be different. There's going to be different ranks. There's going to be different levels of glorification when we stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. And the degree to which we are glorified, the degree to which we receive part of the inheritance will, uh, will be based on what we do with our present tense salvation. I was asked a question one time, and I, I, I think it's good, and I'll ask you this. Uh, Take two, two different Christians. One Christian, uh, he just got saved, 18 to 20 years old, been in drugs and alcohol, I mean, every kind of sin you can imagine. He just miraculously got saved. But a week after he got saved, he was in a car wreck and died. Okay? And you take an a, a 80-year-old man who was saved at 6, 7 years old, grown in a Christian family, grew up in the church, went to a Bible college, well, it never really passed or anything, but he served the Lord in the church. He was a deacon. He sang in the choir, did everything you can possibly imagine. And, and, and at 80 years old, he died of an old age, but was faithful to the church, paid his tithes the whole time. Who do you think is more saved? 